battles won out there. I've just got to take my time now. And a nice one as well. Get in that net. Get in that net. Bosh, get in. Get it back out with a fresh stick on it. Get that hook out of that other fish as quickly as possible. Get that one wrapped up, get that out. Put some more bait out and um, see if we can snare another one. This is my last morning in the swim, so it's action stations. Check that one out. Now when you see pictures of Parco fish on Instagram, it's always the big ones. These ones never ever get a look in. Look at that mate, absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful colouring, beautiful scaling, 28 and a half pound, fought like a demon. You know, just uh, an absolute result. Are you ready for this? Look at this creature. Look at that. Absolutely awesome. 35 pound 10, probably my last fish out of swim 17. I'm gonna move out now, Marco's gonna move in. You know, he's a great guy, puts a load of effort into the business, has done some brilliant food while we've been here as well. And um, I've had my time now, I've had loads of fish. Really, really, really enjoyed it. I'm going to move around to swim 15 so I can still fish the same spots as I've been fishing in here at night. And Marco's going to go over towards the trees where this beauty came from. So uh, give it a little kissy, I think. Mwah. Thank you, my darling. Lovely to make your acquaintance. See you when you're bigger. While we were enjoying beautiful or delicious Italian pizza, I got a violent take on my left hand rod. Had to leg it, but was on time on the rod to have a carp. Oh, oh. who's that? Hey. Hey. I think that's on. And then everybody joined in, and while they were having their pizza, 
I was catching a beautiful mirror. So what a moment for me, having all the friends, all the colleagues together and catching beautiful carp. What else can you ask for? She's a boy pounder! Well, I was lucky enough to get in the bailiff swim and, <laughs> and, and, and leave, leave my rods out in the dark. One of only two people allowed to do it. Uh, and uh, this, this uh, amazing capture came as a result of, uh, of that excellent bit of angling on my part. So that's right. <laughs> We're here in Peck 22, and I'm gonna show you what I've been catching on over the last couple of days. It's very simple. You can mold pellet or anything that sticks around it. You fish it with a piece of dark matter tubing and a short rig. In this case, I've opted for a four and a half inch, 25 pound supernatural hook link, wide gape X size six hook, and a plastic pop-up maze. So the maze pops up, but the weight of the hook keeps it down. So it sits like that on the leg bed. So this part is heavier than that. So when it sinks, it will always sink like that to the bottom. So keep that in mind when we're setting up our feeder. Mold some pellet around it. I like to mold it fairly hard around it. The lake here is deep. It's six meters. What makes that in foot? 24 foot, I guess, I guess. So it takes a long time before the pellet feeder gets, the method feeder gets down and you don't want the pellets to be washed off during the sinking. So now I look where the heavy part is. The heavy part is here. So I keep that to the bottom of the method feeder. And now I push the hook bait on this side in. Bury it a little so it doesn't come off, come off on the, when it sinks but you don't want to be burying it too deep in the pellet either, it will take ages before it's, it, it pops up and, it's able, and, and the carp is able to, to take it. So this is it, I'm ready, just ready to cast in. Top tips for this time of year, uh, listen to the bailiffs. It's always good to, uh, uh, to listen to what they say. Uh, as a fisherman, we always, uh, or the most of us, they know what to do, but the bailiff knows how uh, a pay lake or the fish act on fishings. In the beginning of the week, I was thinking, oh, no PVA bags, I don't need it, I will do it chot wise or, or whatever. But no, I stick to the PVA bags and I catch on PVA bags. I'm into my eighth fish now, all on the solid PVA bags, size six, white cap axis, and small wafter hook baits. Yeah, and this one feels good. Well, mate, we were saying earlier that some people think that solid bags are for little fish. Yeah. What only... do we tell them? Yeah, it's only 59, as you told me, so... Oh, man. Mate, another PB. Three PBs. You know they say? Three in PBs week. in a week. You have to jump in the lake. <laughs> mate, I'm buzzing oh. for you. Absolutely buzzing for I'm you. buzzing as well. Can't well done. It. I'm going to let them take some snaps. I'll get happy way. Well Thank done. You, I've caught 10 fish this week, which four of those fish were personal bests at the time where I caught them. Sorry, oh. mate. Is that you? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a PB, mate. Come on. <laughs> Uh, 
Right, you find me sat round in peg seven with none other than Frank the Tank Secular. He is the, uh, he's the uh, territory manager for Northern Germany, but more importantly, he's catching big carp for fun. So we're gonna have a little look at exactly how he's doing it. So Frank, well done on your fish so far, mate. Thank you, mate. Um, talk me for exactly what you're doing. Yeah, starting from the hook bait. Yeah. It was actually a little 15 mil wafta essential cell soaked in bumbleberry goo. Yeah. I've trimmed it down to make it to give it a little bit of a dumbbell shape. Uh huh. And that just sinks, does it, or does it pop up? Um, no, it just yeah sort of uh, hovers. Nice. Just yeah like that. Then we have a size six white cap X, hand sharpened with a little bit of silicon just to yeah to help the hook. Yeah, and uh, to hold the hair in place when yeah, you to, want it. Yeah, yeah. nice. Um, roughly, I would say four inches of supernatural. And then onto the to the lead system. So you've got a a length of lead core there, but I can yeah. see your lead core is coming around the outside of the lead. Why is yeah. that? Uh, that helps the lead to drop off after the take. Okay. Because that's one thing with using uh, with using a short hook link like this. Yeah. Um, I don't want a big um, three and a half ounce lead bouncing around near the head of the fish. Totally agree. So. So yeah. that, that pulls from that end and once you put pressure on from the rod, exactly right. it straightens so up. Yeah, it straightens Perfect. out, hangs on the tail rubber, any shake of the fish, the lets off. Lovely, and then you're in straight control. Yeah, and then it's it, it's like uh, if you have no lead on, yeah. it doesn't matter that it's a sh short hook link. Softer. Oh. The first part of the session's gone brilliantly. Um, for quite a few of us, but I wanted somebody to move into my swim, get a chance of a few bites. So Marco's gone in there because he was in a swim that didn't have a lot of fish in it. And as you can see, I'm frantically um, racing against the light to find three spots in this swim. Um, we're going to go off to dinner in a couple of hours' time, have some more beautiful Italian food, and uh, chew the fat with the boys, find out who's caught what during the day. Um, and then get the rods back out again about eight o'clock in the pitch black. So you'll have to excuse me while I mark her up. Um, basically, I'm, I'm gonna go on to the same bar that I caught from in swim 17. Marco's uh, kindly agreed to fish the right-hand side of the swim where I've got all the bites during the day. Um, and that leaves me this corner um, because no one's fished this swim all week. So um, basically, I'm gonna fish out on the bar or certainly put some bait out on the bar where I had the bites before. I didn't catch anything last night, which is not a good sign really but we did hear fish over here and I'm wondering if uh, the fish are backed up right into the corner. So it might be a mistake to commit all three rods out onto that bar. So I'm gonna put some bait out before it gets dark. That can sit there and be fished or not. Come back round here in the dark and um, you know, I'm sure you'll join me you know, when I'm just sitting here waiting for something to happen. And if the fish are nutting out really close in, that is where I'll fish. Um, you know, if, uh, if it's all very quiet, I'll just go out onto the bar where I've had the bites and stagger them from the top of the bar to it's like a sort of a hump really. There's a map here, an underwater map, and it clearly shows a hump out there. Um, and basically I'll just be fishing on the top of it, down the back of it, and further down the back of it as well, um, if nothing else materialises. But the amount we heard showing over here and the fact there's been nobody here um, for the first four days of the session means they could be tucked up right in the corners. In that case, solid bag, couple of catapults of 10 millers over the top will be good enough. This is what I caught some of the fish. It's a bait up method lad with a normal lat core of eight centimeters and a nook link of 10 inch with a fantastic slow sinking fruity squid dumbo 12 mil. The hook size is a six and is a wide gape pax. I have a little bit sharpening it for be sure that it penetrate quickly in the mouth of the fish. This gave me a quickly attraction and it melt down very quickly and I'm really sure that my hook link is presented in the right way. If I can give you one tip, will be the precision. So in a, in a lake like Parco, you must be really precise and you have to figure it out the good spot and try to fish every time in the same place.
well, good morning. Um, it's half past three. Oh. And fetched to something that feels reasonable. Not a monster, but uh, doesn't matter. First fish from a new swing. So many fish showing as it got darker. Didn't know what to do, where to put the rigs. But um, after leaving them short for a little while, nothing happened, I put them back out on the bar. And uh, this is fish number two. Nice 26 pounder earlier on, super clean one. Um, this one feels a little bit bigger than that. Italian mirror, um, 25 and a half pound. Well chuffed to get a couple of fish from a new swim. I know I'm fishing the same spot as the old swim, but it still needed pinpointing. Yeah, this one actually came in the deeper water at the back of the bar as it sort of breaks away and goes down towards the, the far bank. A slightly softer thud, um, exactly the same range, 18 rod lengths and a few feet. Um, and this was taken on the garlic. Love, love, love the garlic goo. Um, got some hook baits that have been infused in it as well. Didn't really get to use it in the first session because I was just sticking on the butter corn. But um, I thought, well, now I've got a few days in the new swim, I can try some new stuff, and it is certainly working. Seems a strong fish. It's in! 39 pounds. Fantastic leather carp. It's the first one in my life. I'm really, really happy. I have no many words to say because, you know, it's the first time in my life and I fall down in another metal lab with soaking pallet. Buzzing. Look at that. Really, really happy. She wants to go. Yes. Well, I doubt very much if there's going to be any bites in open water today, uh, which is where I was fishing last night. So I'm going to wind in. I've just heard on the wonky that RJ's had a really big common, um, and I've not really looked at his swim all week because I've been in 17 and, uh, and catching them. So good opportunity, meet up with the boys, see a big carp at the same time. It's the feeling um, that we're after, right? Yeah. If you're fishing on a lake like this, an Italian, um, you know, we're just over here for the big fish. So.
Well, here she is. After a night of fishing, lost one. Um, I was thinking it, it was a good one, but in the end it was a sturgeon. Um, it's one spot that's producing all my bites. Fake mace on it, um, far out, 23 wraps. Um, yeah, the, the fish is sucking the pellets in and I'm catching straight away with a fake mace on it. Does it get any more or better than this? Got a night to go again. Catch all my fish on one spot. I'm uh, fishing two rods on the spot and uh, one in the margin. But all the fish are from the uh, spots uh, in the middle, sort of in the middle. Uh, just on a fake mace, uh, slow sinking, with a white gape hook and a supernatural. Um, uh, all uh, wrapped up in a bag, PVA bag. So, pretty simple. So I've had a lovely time at Parco de Brinta. First night, 45 pounder, had another one as well. And on the second night, I caught 50 pounder. And at that point, what happens there on in, you know, it's, it's always nice to come away and catch a 50 pounder. So to get one on the second night, I was really happy. The action has been pretty consistent. I've caught some lovely fish. But last night, I've had the cherry, you know, I had a 58 pound lever, and that's, that's came on my left hand rod in a, on a little margin spot. I've been seeing fish top down there, but until now, I've struggled to catch. But now having caught, I think there's every chance that that area could produce a few more fish. Yeah, boy. So here's my rig for the session at Parco de Brenta. Very, very basic as always with me, very simple. Any of you could tie this at home. It's, there's nothing complicated at all. Starting from the top, 15 pound carp line. I'd say you'll need 15 or, or a 20 really. Casting quite heavy PVA bags, you do run the risk of cracking off if you're going quite far. So yeah, 15 or 20 pound line. I've gone for a square pair in three and a half ounces. Two reasons for that. One, gives a very good instant bolt effect, that compact shape, you know, very good for maximizing the force when the, the fish impacts the lead, but also it takes up less room in the bag. Very small, compact, like I say, and just you use the, uh, the stem at the back to tie your PVA tape round when you're finished. The hook link itself, that's 25 pounds supernatural. It's very strong, very soft, and I bet when the fish have got that in their mouth, they've got no idea they've got it there. The hook, size six Kamakuru, um, wide gape. I, I've used wide gapes for so long now, you know, I just trust them, but particularly in the size six. I've caught hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fish of all sizes in, in every country I've ever fished. And uh, when I fished that, with a 14 turn knotless knot, that enables the hair to exit exactly level with the point. And you'll see that I've got a, a little dumbbell on there. This one's a fruity squid that's been soaked in um, Scopex Supreme Goo. Obviously, to start with, I imagine, I've checked it, it sort of sits on the point, and then when it takes on a little bit of water, it sort of sits on its side like that. But either way, none of that matters. What really matters is it goes in the bag, all compact like that. The pellet is what the fish are coming for. The fish have been reared on that pellet. They really, really want it. They come in, that's a balanced bait. Big fish, big mouth, really strong suction, filtration system, that mouth, that, that's what it is. Sucks on that. that, that hook link flies into the mouth. And at that point, with a three and a half ounce lead on and a very short hook link like that, and an absolutely razor sharp hook, they are in a whole world of trouble. Um, things I do for this company, eh? I'll just. Uh just about to do a little message to our Italian fans and all the Italian team. So they've got me in this garb. And it's only roared off, isn't it? It's only roared off. One fired right under the trees. Little uh, garlic supreme infused stick. A garlic, little garlic wafter. Chunky little common. John, are you on the naughty list or the nice list? No, you can't be on the naughty list. You're too, you're too nice. Sorry, my beard's getting in the way. Sorry. Oh, I love carp fishing. Yes, I do. Carp fishing—it's good for your health. Get it? 
ask a few else. <laughs> I've not even had a beer today either. I must do that this morning. Come on, Tungsta. Come on, we'll call you Santa. Tired now, brother. Yeah, getting tired. Come on, Santa one, Carp Neil, get in the net. Bosh. Ho ho ho. Right, can I take this off now? Is that all right? <laughs> maybe a, Have I done my job now? <laughs> Have I? Jenny, maybe a ho ho ho. I've done a ho ho. What's in Santa's sack? Wouldn't you like to know, gorgeous, eh? Keep talking like that, we'll show you the North Pole. And there it is, the Christmas Common. Um, well chuffed to get this one. I've been in meetings all day today. I've had some brilliant times around in RJ Swim, talking about what we're going to do for next year. It's such a great environment. It's so fertile. Loads of people putting their ideas into the hat. And uh, we've come up some, with some really, really good stuff. But um, I was itching to get back to the rods. I knew that barge had produced. Fired the rod right under the trees. Little tiny garlic stick. And a little garlic wafter over the top. And my favourite little combi rig we were away just at the time when we were doing that little message for the Italian fans so uh, it couldn't have worked out better. Well, as you can see, the light is dropping, getting towards the end of our time now at Parco. Uh, got two nights left to go. Um, been a good day today. I've had a brilliant meeting today about um, marketing and just general sort of fishing tactics, chewing the fat for 2019. It's a really good bunch of blokes that we're working with and uh, the ideas are absolutely brilliant. Fishing-wise, RJ had an amazing 48-pound common earlier on. Um, it was lovely to go around there and see that. I'd been sort of welded into Swim 17 the first part of the week because there was so much daytime action. Um, but even though it's good for a day bite in here in 15, I thought I'm going to go and do a bit of a tour of the lake and spend some time with the guys, which was really good fun. And then when that was over, rushed back here to get my rods out. I'd seen a fish show against that margin before I left. So um, fired one right under the tree, got it in there absolutely perfectly. You know, you've got to get the sort of angle of the cast right so that it fires in low and just hits the clip. You still feel the lead at the bottom. And um, that one was away when I was doing something silly for uh, the Italian team. So that was, that was good to, uh, for it all to happen like that. Um, since then, the left hand rod's gone back out there sweet as well. Um, and I'm starting to get liners on that rod. When I was spawning, sometimes I got it caught in the tree and the spawn sort of opens and sprays the bait everywhere. Oh, 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 yes. Yeah. Ah, oh. no. Yep. How about that? Funny just for this bombing, for God's sake. Gonna keep doing what I'm doing, hoping that it's underneath this left hand rod. But that is so mad. They're responding to this pellet, it's natural food to them. Getting the spawning super accurate, getting the car super accurate as well. Um, that's the key. Work, work, work. And uh, you should be rewarded on here. We saw, with, uh, we went out and had a look with a GoPro at Swim 17 and the amount of carp milling about in all these marginal snags um, is just ridiculous and it just sort of taught me, every time you see underwater footage, it just sort of opened your eyes to another dimension of fishing and uh, you just sort of realise how much bait you can put in with the amount of fish that are in here. Oh, one's just shown out there. 
just on top of the bar. Bodes well for tonight. As I was saying before I got interrupted, uh, I'm going to fish up until dinner, which is at seven o'clock. Um, the left hand rod, if it goes, I can't get it back out there. It's so far under the trees, it's a joke. But this rod is 20 and a half wraps up to the red boy um, and uh, just off the bank a bit because there's a load of reeds sort of sticking out from the bank, which I've hooked up on a couple of times on the cast. Um, so a little bit, what I'm basically doing is aiming at the tips of the trees rather than aiming at the water's edge. And I know that if that certain part of the tip of the tree, if I aim in that direction, it's going to land right. And uh, just follow the rig in if you can. Go towards it a bit so it drops straight. Oh, he's properly going for it, this carp. Oh, it. Oh. Did all the hard work. When you've just lost one, which you can see I take really well, um, you really, really, really are something right under there. Really, really, really want to get the next one in. There he is. There he is. It's no monster, but it don't matter. It's all about winning not about the weight. Come on, big fella, get in. Oh no, get in, get in, get in, get in, get in. Yes, get in! Ah, oh, it feels so good when you've lost one. And there he is, 33 pounds of muscle pack Parco mirror. And the jury's out at the moment as to why the big girls are not showing up. And I know that sounds crazy when there's been multiple 50 pounders caught, but Parco is famous for its 60 and 70 pounders. And there's definitely one 80 in here. And uh, it is November, we have to remember that. And also the moon phase this week isn't brilliant. Um, and also the air pressure's going up and up and up. And on a deep lake, that could be affecting the bigger fish. So, but for, for now, I don't care. I'm super happy to keep getting bites. Pleased I've worked out this new swim quite quickly and uh, I'm sure the night has got more in store. Lovely. Left hand rod again, it's now five past three. a bit for freedom. Seven and a half pound garlic muncher. So nice to be getting loads of bites. As I've probably said before, I've had a real lean season this year. So to have a mega session like this uh, feels so, so sweet. But I'm already thinking about tomorrow night. It's our last night. And um, if I'm getting bites just on one rod, I need to bring the other rods into action. So I think it does seem to be all about that margin. So I think I'm going to bring one closer in tomorrow night, fish it towards the margin, not super tight because I don't want to hang up in the trees in the dark, but um, see if I can get two rods going and um, snare one of those Parco monsters. But for now, I'm well happy.
the last and the biggest fish of last night, 44 and a half pounds, came just before first light. And I see on the group, there's been another couple of fish caught last night around the lake as well. But for me, I am over the moon. Left hand rod keeps going, 18.3 wraps, loads of bait over the top, and that all important garlic hook bait. Swim 15 is situated up in the top corner of the lake in the same bay as Swim 17. It's got loads of really good spots to cast at and over the couple of nights I've been in here, um, where I'm fishing has evolved. So I started fishing out on the bar that I was fishing from Swim 17. Caught a couple of fish there the first night, um, but felt like I needed to change the next day and the fish were showing against the trees. I had a meeting to go to, so I couldn't fish in the day. But when I got back to the swim, I fired them up really close to the trees and caught fish straight away. Um, in the night time, I decided to still fish on the bar, but go down the back of the bar towards that tree line bank over there, but not so close that I might potentially lose fish in the dark, not get into the rods as quickly. Uh, and that really paid off, but all the bites came on the rod closest to the tree. So the bar rod that had been doing the bites for me just stopped happening completely. And I think what was going on, the fish were coming down that margin, they'd get to that rod first, even though it wasn't tight, and they would never even get up onto the bar and start feeding on the bait up there. So for tonight, I'm going to slot two rods really close together down that margin, but I'm going to put another rod sort of really close to the bank, closer into me, almost right in the corner, um, because fish are showing there as well. On the first night when I got here, a lot of fish showed really close in, about 40 yards out. And I found from one of the local heroes, a guy called Nicholas Holzer that I've known for a few years, that 40 yards out in front of this swim is apparently the spot. Now there it's just deep, it's just 22 foot, firm bottom but not gravel. It's short of that gravel bar that comes up out at probably 18 wraps, so what's that, just over 70 yards. And it's just a big basin, you know, and the fish I think turn up there uh, and can be caught there at night. If I'd known that, if I'd spoke to Nicholas before I started, I probably would have fished two rods in that area from the word go. And although it's been really productive for me, I've not caught any proper big ones. And you sort of think that tree line down there, it's a great place to intercept fish and get loads of bites, but maybe it's not such a great place for the huge fish that are in here. But I love getting a bite. I don't mind doing that at all. If I have to wade through a few more to get another 50 pounder, I'll be more than happy. Them, them 30s are absolutely pulling my arm off. So if you do come in, at fi come in 15 at any point, then definitely you want to be fishing up against the bank nice and tight. And then in the night time, out in open water, probably short of the bar. Mm, lovely. Here you go, just before the sun came up, it roared off. I'm really happy with this fish. It's the biggest fish up until now. We're gonna put it back and see if we can catch an even bigger one. Yes. Another one up tight, 20 and a quarter wraps. It was like a good fish, this one, actually. Just recast it, I had a few bleeps earlier on, which didn't develop and uh, just thought I'd recast. When you're fishing that, that sort of tight, it's always a good idea. If, you're not, if, you, if you feel like something's gone wrong out there, the rig's been interfered with, always just redo it. Oh no, he's getting around there. Oh, it's past it, he's past it, thank God, thank God. High energy fishing this, you've really got to work at it. We've seen there's loads of fish and we've sent the drone up, there's loads of fish charging up and down that margin in between me and Marco, which is no surprise. Just keeping out of the way of the angling pressure. Just by baiting heavy, another sort of 15 big spoms, nice common, 15 big spoms out there. And uh, getting them super accurate. I'm just fishing two rods, because you know, if that other rod goes now, I'm in trouble, you know? So. Uh, just two rods out there, concentrate more on two rods, get it all super accurate, and um, just work at it. Nice common. Just tipping over the dorsal there. Good common this one, good 30. Don't want to lose him. So just a few little tips for when you're fishing up tight like that. You want the same size lead on every rod. I know that sounds silly, but it makes a difference. 
Um, I'm using three and a half ounce flat pair swivels, nice and condensed shape, they punch into the wind well, and they're perfectly sort of suited to these 12 foot three and three quarter infinity uh, DFs. People always say, oh, uh, why do they use such heavy rods when they're only fishing at short distances? Well, when you're trying to drop it in literally a foot square in a crosswind with 15 pound line on, which is 040 diameter, which you have to have because it's snaggy and you're pulling so hard, you need a stiff rod that's really accurate like these to drop it like that. Now you've got a stick on as well. If I had a softer rod, 12 foot two and three quarter, it'd just be going all over the place. So punching it sort of uh, hard and low into the wind, hitting the clip just short with the, the branches is getting me, you know, I'm, I'm walking towards it. As I hit the clip, I'm walking towards the rig to let the lead drop as straight as possible so it doesn't swing back towards me away from the shallow water. And all that together with the work rate is getting the bites. Water's so clear, it's lovely seeing them twisting and turning in the edge. Look at that, yeah. Net in the water at the last minute. Go on, get in there. Yes, get in that net. Wicked, absolutely wicked. Thirty-five and a couple of ounces. Get in. Check out the length on that baby. Yeah, man. One night to go. And these ones keep on coming. Hopefully a monster's gonna follow it. But if it doesn't, I really don't care. I've already had the session of a lifetime. Awesome. These are the stick mixes that form an essential part of my fishing here at Parco. They're both made exactly the same way. So to start off with, I'll show you that lovely sort of crumbly carpy mix. So we've got cell boilies in there, crushed up in the crusher, real small. I'll put them through two or three times just to get all the big bits out of there. That's mixed with the Parco pellet, which you have to have in a PVA bag here. They see so much of it, they are absolutely addicted to it and you'd be mad not to use it. So I mix the two together, sort of in equal quantities, and then I put loads of goo over the top of it, but not as it comes straight out of the bottle. So on this one, I'm using the butter corn. And I'm mixing a little bit of it with water to thin it right down so that it gets absorbed by the pellets and absorbed um, by the boily crumb in there. If you put it on in the thick, gloopy stuff, it sort of sits on top and doesn't draw right in. The reason for drawing right in is you get better attraction over a longer period of time. If it's just sitting on top, it washes away and then it's gone. This stuff is bleeding off the whole time. So I'm using the long chuck funnel web system, the thinnest one that we do. I developed this many years ago for fishing at real extreme range with a PVA bag. And this sort of fishing, although it's at closer range, it reminds me of those old days at Mercer's Park, you know, when we were winter fishing, one little bag of boily crumb and a little bit of pellet, um, and that was getting us the bites. No bait in the swim whatsoever. That is the power of this thing. And then that's the bag itself, or the stick as we call it little tiny tiny little stick and the reason i'm using them over solid bags on here is one i've only just started using solid bags and i'm not the best at tying them fishing in open water is fine but when you're trying to fire it under the trees if the bag wanders at all you end up dropping into the trees or onto a snag rather than dropping it in the little hole in between with these and a three and a half ounce lead it's flying straight as an arrow every single time the only time i have to wind it in is if i've miscast so there's nothing about the rig that's pulling it off course. So I have a load of these tied in advance. If I get it wrong, wind it back in again, put another one straight on and out she goes. And the hook links with this are very, very short. The same as the solid bags. I thought if the fish are conditioned to feed him right on top of a solid bag and they're getting caught on short hook links, then use a short hook link through one of these. So it's just a little tiny combi rig. It's got boom for probably about three or four inches and then an inch of soft stuff and a little tiny wafter as we call it. Kev at Mainline has put the effort in and made some little tiny barrels for us, eight mil and 10 mil in diameter. They're perfect with these. And I just use a little white buttercorn one um, to complement that. And that's probably got me the most takes. But the second mix is uh, 
something that you're probably not gonna, I bet, I bet a carp's never been caught on this in this lake. It's the garlic goo, and I've done the same thing. So I've crumbed up the cell, put the garlic goo on top of it, and that's turned it from that sort of creamy color to the orange color. Put the pellets in as well, bit more garlic goo, and it's a supreme. This one's really thin, you don't need to water it down. Put it over the top of it, mix it around with a fork, you know, give it a few minutes, let it all soak in, and then you're ready to start making the bags. And I'm using a little tiny squid dumbbell over the top with the garlic goo on top, so they've gone orange as well. Started using that more in this session, and it seems to be at night, when the visibility side of it isn't such an important part, this is really winning. It's such a pungent smell. It's like, we, we don't sell much of this goo at all because people don't like the smell. You know, you have to catch the angler before you catch the fish. And it's just, it, it's so pungent. It's so sort of uh, gets in the back of your throat, almost like, um, like a sharp sort of smell. Um, but everywhere I've taken this, all the syndicates I've fished in the UK and in Europe, I've always tried the garlic and it's always done really, really well. So the same size stick and making the sticks is really easy. So basically you want a bait box or one of the compacts like I'm using there and you just, the, with the inner tube of the uh, of the long chuck funnel web, you're just scraping some up. You're not picking it up and trying to pour it down the hole, scraping it up against the side of the bait box, just a three or four scoops into it, then turn it around the other way, then use the plunger, push it down under loads of pressure, have your thumb at the end of the funnel web so you can really compress it down, then push it out the end with the plunger, and then pull a load of PVA off. That's the thing a lot of people do wrong, is they're trying to tie the bag with almost no PVA off the funnel web. Pull a load off, big overhand knot, pinch up tight the top of the bag and just pull the knot down onto the top of the bag. Do a second one, get them as close together as you can so you waste no PVA, cut between the two and your bag is done and then your system is ready for another go. And I'll just do, like you see here, I've probably got 10 or 12 done up already. So if I miss casting the night, I'm not thinking, oh, I can't be bothered to do another bag. I'll just put a single out. They're already there. Just slide another one on with a stick needle and out it goes. One of the other things I've been doing is using one of the Chodit tools to make a massive hole through the middle of the bag. It looks really ugly and it doesn't fly as well, so I wouldn't do it at real extreme range. But what it stops is anything on the rig getting crumpled up. I've noticed where these are so compressed, when I'm pulling them in, you've got the little kicker on the end of the hook. Sometimes it's pushing the kicker further up the hook and it's not angling in as much. So by making a big hole, sometimes you can do it with a, with a needle, just keep putting it backwards and forwards through the stick and it just makes a bigger hole, stops anything catching and it all sits on there perfectly. So the rig never ever tangles, you get a lovely little pile of food around it, casts mega accurately. And now I've used it on this session, I've got the winter coming in the UK, I cannot wait to use this on the syndicates I'm gonna fish in the UK because I've become a bit of a lazy boily angler in the last couple of years because I'm always fishing for bigger fish and when you've got nuisances around, you can't use sticks. But the lakes I'm fishing this winter have got no nuisances and loads of carp and that is miles more attractive than one boil on its own. So for somewhere like Parco and anywhere with no nuisances, get on the stick. 30 pounder, look at him. Kaboom! Yes! Thirty pound an ounces. Literally within seconds of finishing spawning, they're back on the bait and it's away again. This one on a little white buttercorn dumbbell and uh, like a mix of a little bit of cell, a little bit of their pellet, a bit of buttercorn over the top in the stick. That's what's doing it. And uh, if I get the accuracy right on the cast, and the spawning, the bites just keep on coming. We've got a fish on. Everybody's having a meeting. I, I was thinking, oh, I'll leave my rods in. So you see no lines in the water and the fish is free to go. It's just before dusk. Um, I was just preparing for baiting up and I have a take. So let's see what's on the end of the line. Could be the biggest one of my trip. Oh yeah, lovely common. 
They look all so massive over here. It's not the biggest one, but... Um, oh! I'm happy with it. Yeah! You're mine. Uh, lovely. <laughs> I fished all week uh, with PVA bags. It's, it was totally new for me. And I will uh, for sure take it with me uh, and fish next year on, uh, or maybe this winter again uh, with PVA bags. It's easy uh, and I learned fishing with it. So good. Uh, I've passed four nights uh, on the swim on my left. It is, this is a point uh, where normally the fish are passed in your way. Uh, but this week the fish doesn't move. They are not moving a lot. They are staying in the corner of the lake. So the swim on my right was free. And RG caught so many fish on the corner on the right. So I decided to make the two last night on this swim to try to catch a carp was just uh, get out of this corner and that's it 20 minutes 20 hours sorry after moving first bite and and she tried to get uh, to the corner and after a long fight very slow very heavy but not very hard and after a long fight she came into the surface and I saw the big head. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> Grab it. Oh, it's a good one in the net. <laughs> Very good one. In a part, I'm, I'm very happy because this is a very big carp. The only one, but a very big. Uh, in another point, it's very difficult to catch one and it's a nice result. Uh, zero. 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 <laughs> Where? Where? Andre, Andre. It's big, man. Yep. 59 and a half. Hey! Oh. Big Does somebody have a big Come on, <laughs> back to my swim. <laughs> 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 I want, to, I want to cast that. Okay. Someone yeah. said it was a big one. Who said it was a big one? Feel cool. Feel cool. We passed five nights at the moment and nothing during these five nights and six days. Only two sturgeon. This is the first bite I get. And this is the one. <laughs> 59. Crazy. This is an English company, Harry. We don't deal in kilos. We're talking pounds and ounces. All right? Okay. When it becomes illegal, we'll start talking kilos. Yeah, yeah, but we're on tour in Europe. Brits on tour. Brits on tour. Was that Brits or pricks? <laughs> yeah, man. I've seen a fish jumping during the afternoon and just cast a PVA bag on it and I catch it. So keep your eyes on the water and try to catch everything you see moving on the water. And never give up. And never give up. <laughs> Uh, when you see all of the anglers, the very good anglers, uh, it's very difficult this week to catch carp. And it's li like we said uh, yesterday in the car, uh, it's never over until it's over. So uh, I guess 12 hours left. We will see.
right, gentlemen. Yeah, but yeah, but raise, your, raise your glasses to our host of the week, Antonio, <laughs> from Parker del Brenta. An amazing week. Thank we you, guys. Well. We salute you. We salute Thank you. you. An amazing place. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. <laughs> Round of applause. Right. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And of course, the Vida. Thank much. you. Brilliant place. Um, can we, the Vida, can we have yeah. the, the present hey. for Mama? We have a present for Mama as well. Oh, Mama. Yeah, yeah. So, we want to say thank you very much for giving birth to Antonio. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also giving birth to Ricardo, because if you didn't have them, then we wouldn't have this lovely lake. So thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And this is from us to you. No. To say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> to Mama. Mille grazie a Mama. Right, gentlemen, gentlemen, before you start, before you start, before you start. <laughs> I just want to say it's, it is an honour to work and to fish with such a bunch of misfits, throwback rejects, ex-cons, lunatics and everything else. It's been an absolute pleasure, gentlemen. I've had the best week of my life. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for doing all the things that you do for Corda. I salute you. Cheers, Gaffa. Right, let's f*** you. Come on. <laughs>Without doubt, my three favourite memories from uh, this week at Parco. First of all is the banter. Yes, we've had so many laughs. Um, getting together in the evening at dinner has just been brilliant every single time. The buzz around the boys is, is just amazing. And um, particularly being around for when uh, Matthew um, caught that lovely 40 pounder and we were all there um, to witness it. That was absolutely awesome. Secondly, it's got to be the fish. What a place. Um, just, I'm using this as a model for Gigantica for the future. It shows how many massive carp you can fit into one lake. It's about the same size as Gigantica and it's got two and a half to three thousand monsters in it. Gigantica's got 600, so we've got a long way to go. Um, the fish have surpassed my expectations massively, although there's been no monsters for Parco out. The quality of the fish um, has just been like nothing I've ever seen. I think their Instagram normally is, is just full of the big ones. And to be honest, they're not the prettiest ones. And following on from that, probably my, my other lasting memory, uh, the last fish I caught out of Swim 17 was an absolute stunner. And it wasn't the biggest I've had by far, um, being a mid-30, but what a common, like just chestnut brown, perfectly proportioned, fought like a demon. You know, and to get a bite right at the death in that swim before I moved, you know, that will stay with me. This week was once again very nice to see all the guys back. They live all far from each other, so I don't see them very often, but that's for me very important. I had five fish in total this week, and if there's one fish that sticks out, then it's definitely the Peter Carp. That was just a brilliant experience. The fishing got off to an absolutely perfect start for me. First evening before midnight, I managed to slip the net under two carp, including a new personal best, <laughs> personal best common of 56 pounds. It, it was kind of went downhill from there, no more bites were forthcoming, but you know what, I've got to spend a week with all of my colleagues from across Europe, and we've just proved once again we are just one big happy family. I really enjoyed this week, because my family came here, and my highlight is all the guys of far with them, and the fact that we're all together, that is the best highlight I can ask. Well, I have caught uh, 12 fish, 11, 12 fish, and I am really buzzing because I caught my first leather carp. So 39 pounds, so not the biggest one, but for me it was a dream because I never caught in my life on fish like that, so top. Well, absolute last knockings, last bite of my session, and it turns out to be the biggest one. 61 and a half pounds, this place is amazing.
So what a week it's been, loads of fish caught. Uh, my swim's been pretty good to be honest, I've been fishing it most nights, I think I've caught every night bar one. Although I did catch a 60 on the last morning, which really is the icing on the cake. My favourite one had to be that lever, it was so clean, just a really, really nice fish to look at. 58 pound lever carp, you don't catch them every day. And uh, it's just a special lake this, and I look forward to coming back again.